All right, Missy, let's start. All right, technically it's 6.59, but I'll start reading the whole little spiel I got to do, so get this done and over with. As a preliminary matter, this is Missy Cackle, Boys Boys, Senior Administrative Assistant to the Amendment Board of Health. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Alan? Yes. Tom? Yes. And he's not coming tonight, so, and I don't expect anybody calling in or coming in because your agenda is very small. Um, good evening. This is the open meeting of the Menden Board of Health to be conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020 due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings and as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly, accept, publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of the public body are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order which you can find posted on the with the agenda materials for this meeting allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely as long as reasonable public access is afforded to the public so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless the participation is required by law. This meeting will feature public comment. For this meeting, the Board of Health is convening, convening by telephone conference slash video conference via Microsoft Teams, as posted on the town's website identifying how the public may join. Uh, please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that all folks may be able to see you and that take care not to share sh screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. Uh, um, all supporting material have been provided to members of this body and are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along with the posted agenda unless the vice chair notes otherwise. We are now turning to the first item on the agenda. Before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of business and ensure accurate meeting minutes. I will introduce each speaker to the agenda on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the vice chair will go down the line of members, inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold your please hold until your name is called. Further, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking. Remember to speak clearly in a way that helps generate accurate meeting minutes. For any response, please wait until the vice chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If you wish to engage with other members, please do so through the vice chair taking care to identify yourself. And with that, I would turn over to the agenda, which is the first thing is update of COVID-19. Alan. OK, um, I'm uh, seeing everything uh, flow about the same. Uh, it seems as though some people are uh, right on task with what needs to be done to uh, follow the guidelines. And then I see other situations where people look like they're getting a little too comfortable and might need uh, an occasional reminder. Um, it's hot. It's summertime. I understand. Um, but um, for the most part, uh, I would say uh, everything I'm seeing and hearing is is encouraging that we're uh, continuing to uh, proceed in the right direction. Um, Tom, what do you got for us? Well, no, no opening statement. Uh, you know, we're rolling along with the uh, reopening process. Um, aside from what, you know, I had run into uh, a couple weeks ago when when Missy, you were on vacay, a um, couple of small issues that were addressed. Um, I like to, I haven't been around the town uh, locally myself a lot the last couple of weeks uh, since we last met. So uh, I'm hopeful that everything is going well. Um, but I'll have to defer to our illustrious boots on the ground, Missy, to let us know if uh, things are flowing well within the community. Back to you, Mr. Vice Chairman. 
Thank you, Tom. Uh, I, I, I agree uh, wholeheartedly. Missy, uh, why don't you uh, give us the official uh, picture of uh, how we're doing? What's going on? Um, everything's going okay. Uh, right now, the last count, we only have one active um, case in Menden. Um, Anne, good for her, is actually on vacation this week. So she does have someone covering for her. I haven't heard anything anything out of this person, so I'm just going to say right now we are at one only one active case, um, which brings the total of what we have as 31. And I believe, according to the state web, website, I think we've had over 600 residents tested. So if we've had over 600, only, and I don't want to sound like it's, little but only 31 have come back positive so i think that's not too bad for the size of town that we are um, we are getting some complaints that come in um, we have some that have gone to the state the state has contacted me i've sent lenny out to go handle those issues um, one of the issues we've had recently is a dance studio in town um, i believe there's only one left um, parent is concerned because they are going to hold they she she contacted me first she um was concerned because they were going to have a recital um and there was no bathroom facilities going to be available no hand washing or hand sanitizer available things of that nature so i reached out to the two mics mike um coughlin and mike lanigan uh flanagan i'm sorry and uh, they emailed me back and gave me what the procedure would be. So I emailed it to the parent. Um, she later uh, must have contacted the state because I told her we won't get involved unless there's a complaint. And apparently last night, this particular dance studio had over 20 kids in one room unmasked. They were younger kids, but I don't know. They were young enough where they were not required to wear masks. Because if you remember, two and under were not required but anything over that was. Um, so she has contacted the state. The state has CC'd me on the email that he, I, I believe, sent out to the dance studio. So I'm just waiting to hear back. Um, we did hear about another um, restaurant in town that uh, they sent a, a resident or a person, I should say, sent a complaint to the state. I had uh, we had already gotten the email from the complaint the person making the complaint, I already sent Lenny up there. Lenny went up there and took care of it, told him, you know, we can't, this is our third time. If I have to come back up here again, we'll we'll start the finding process. Um, and they understood. And when he walked in, the person coming from behind had his mask around his neck. So he didn't have it on properly. And Lenny kind of scolded him and said, you know better. Um, so we'll wait and see how that plays out. Um, but yeah, right now I'm just kind of feeling complaints, trying to get people on track when they ask questions. Um, I try to, to, if I'm not positive about the answer, I will contact the state just to make sure I'm on the right page as they are. So um, as of right now, that's pretty much off the top of my head of what I have for updates for you guys as far as COVID-19 is concerned. Yeah, um, Alan? Thank you, Missy. Uh very, uh, very good. Um, if that's all we have on COVID updates, we can move on to the next item on the agenda. Uh, just one question, if I may, before we move. Yes, yes, Tom, please. Uh, so just out of curiosity, Missy, I know you'd mentioned in general summary there, you were part of your summation was building complaints. Just to get an idea, What's what's it been from your perspective on a say a daily basis? What you are getting in terms of a a quantity of complaint level? Just just so I can kind of get an idea in my head. I wouldn't really say there are a lot. They might be follow ups, like that one particular person with the recital. Um, I might have gotten three or four emails from her. Um, so i mean if you take it how many individual responses i'm making even to the same person it's, it's a couple but as far as you know complaints for a particular one establishment i'd say this week i've probably for different things i probably got uh say four complaints so i don't think it's really all that bad um but 
in those four complaints, I might have sent a follow up email two or three times just to let them know what I found out. And if I find out any more, if they come back with another question, that kind of thing. Gotcha. OK, very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so Alan, the next thing we have is kind of related to COVID, but um, not it's uh, discussing the possibility of having a drive through flu clinic. Um, again, a couple of weeks ago, uh, Anne reached out to me. We had talked and the idea has been floated around because she's not so far really hasn't got any solid guidance from the state as far as how flu clinics are supposed to be run this year. Um, so the idea is that maybe this might be a good opportunity for us to start working with Jamie Terry from Region 2, working on our drive through plan up at the school and do the flu clinic as a drive through just in case. If we're responsible or have play any part in giving any kind of um, vaccine for COVID-19, uh, where we still want everybody to social distance and things like that, the drive through um, might be the best way of doing it. So I just want to run it by you guys to see how you felt. Um, Jamie is away this week, um, but she did send me an email saying she would. She's more than happy to help us work it out. Um, I don't know if we start off with meeting with Jamie first and and seeing if Ann wants to come in and we start working on it kind of together. Or do we pull Ann in and Jamie in and contact Dr. Maruschak and um you know the police department you know however so i just first but i want to run it by you guys alan um I, I i like the idea um and i like the idea kind of twofold uh as you mentioned it kind of gives us a opportunity to practice uh something we may need in the future um so i i take it this would be at the clough school no or this misco misco OK. So, yeah, I, I would say in my my first opinion uh, would be to, you know, work with maybe Jamie on kind of an outline mm -hmm. before we uh, reach out to others. Um, just so that, you know, we can give them something uh, after, you know, Board of Health kind of reviews it. Um, we could present those people that we want or we feel need to be notified um, some sort of presentation to look over. Um, and obviously working with Jamie, uh, we should be able to come up with a good outline uh, to, you know, present to all those that, you know, need to be involved and need to be uh, notified. Tom, what's your opinion? Uh, so just kind of a pre-question, what do we uh, normally average um, annually when we do our flu clinics? Any rough guess, Missy? I'd say about uh, between the one that's in, down at the senior center and the one here, I'd probably say a total of maybe 75. Okay. Um, well, I like the concept of having a, a drive through option, you know, available and, you know, looked at and assessed uh, we don't know what when do we tip we typically do these what is the month of october sound correct yeah okay so of course it's only july we you know we we kind of trying to look ahead to it with a crystal ball to figure out what the fall is going to be like we don't know so it's, it's probably a good idea to plan plan for it um and potentially too it might draw some more more folks um, and I think it could, you know, alleviate concerns should this, uh, you know, coronavirus situation still be fairly active that people can comfortably come to an environment and be isolated, uh, so to speak, from others and minimize contact, um, you know, to get the to get a flu shot. And like I say, I think it could uh, potentially increase the numbers, which is always a good thing too. I like to see more people participate in it myself, but so I'd be for it. Tom, I think you'd be right um, in thinking about the increased coming to a flu clinic, especially if 
um, people, um, especially the elderly, or um, those who are have a, a, a compromised immune system that they can still go and get their flu shot without having to go into a doctor's office. They can stay safely in the confines of their own vehicle and not feel like, oh, I got to go into the doctor's office or I got to go into a CVS. It might, you know, help them out this time. I, and I agree that with that increased numbers. Uh, I also agree, um, and I have a feeling that where there's been some talk of uh, the flu and maybe a slight resurgence in uh, COVID coming this fall, that we may find more people interested in the uh, flu vaccine than normal. And this would uh, be a great way for them to be able to, as Missy said, uh, safely uh, get at least that taken care of. Um, so I, I have a feeling and, and um, I'm hoping that when, if COVID comes back in the fall, uh, I'm hoping I'm accurate in saying a slight uptick, uh, but I have a feeling more people are going to become conscious of, uh, you know, if they haven't in the past getting the flu uh, vaccine this year. Tom, Missy. I think um, no. I think uh, those points. I think we're all on point with uh, with the thought about the uh, the drive through aspect. Um, like you say, Missy. I think it's just a matter of maybe starting some coordination um, to kind of you know kind of get a design together, if you will, mm -hmm. on what mm -hmm. it needs to look like and what how we need to prep um, you know differently. Um, for a drive-through version versus a you know a walk-in version, um, so yeah, I, I agree. You know, um, de especially depending, like I said, if we are going to be playing any part in a vaccine, this will give us the opportunity to kind of play it out first. Kind of, you know, and we can still do two flu clinics if we feel that that's what's necessary. Um, because typically we do have two flu clinics. We'll have one during the day at the senior center, one in the early evening um, here in the office. Um, again, depending on if this, how the schools play out, whether or not they're open or not, maybe we could do one during the day and then like, and kind of keep that schedule going. Um, and then do one in the evening. I don't, I, you know, again, it would be all part of how you guys want to handle it and what um, Jamie thinks and Anne. So that's just my uh, Yeah, I, I, I would also be, you know, obviously once we get some kind of an outline, um, Amy down at the senior center may have some uh, valid input. And I don't know, I mean, October is, uh, the beginning of October is can still sometimes be uh, summer like. Um, so hopefully the weather will be on our side. But um, is there a possibility of doing it on a weekend day and just extending the hours a little bit to maybe, um, you know, catch people uh, at an opportune time? I, I think that would really depend on um, Anne. On, and what okay. her nurse and staff it did. It, I'm not sure if they do them on the weekends. We've never scheduled them on weekends. So I, I would be f fine with that if you guys were fine with that. And if Ann thought it was going to be would, was a good idea. Yeah, I'm just kind of thinking if it was done, you know, Saturday after lunch um, time, maybe, you know, in, in the early afternoon, maybe we could uh, catch everybody. Mm -hmm. Um I, I don't know, but I guess probably the first thing to do um, would be to, you know, have a, this conversation with Jamie Perry um, and, you know, see what she has experienced in the past or what she's heard or what her thoughts are. And, you know, we, we got time to, to build on that. Yep. All right. So, uh, Tom, we'll, we, we're going to give Missy the OK to move forward. Absolutely. Thank you, Missy. No problem. 
Um, the next thing on your agenda is um, the scholarships. So the last meeting you guys asked me to reach out um, to find out whether or not you guys could use your stipends for the scholarships. And when I, I talked, I uh, emailed Eric. He said the only way you could do that is if you guys took your um, stipends, you filled out all the paperwork, you were paid for it, and then you would have to then write a check from your personal account um, for the scholarship fund. That's the only way it could be done. Um, the way the budget's voted, it's voted for stipends. It's not voted for as a um, scholarship. Okay, Missy. Um, yeah, I, I got that information from you, and thank you for forwarding it. Um, personally, that sounds way too complicated. <laughs> um, I, 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 AJ has warned me about the the paperwork that's involved, um, so I'm going to take it at that. Uh, so we really that, that that's our only other funding source. Correct. Tom, what's your opinion? Well, uh, based on what I understand with the process uh, of quote unquote, I guess, officially claiming the stipend, um, it seems like it may not be the most desirable avenue to take. Um, although I'm all for, I'd love to see that go to that purpose. I think it's a great, great purpose of assets, of money. Um, I know when we last were meeting, um, we talked about a couple other possibilities. Uh, I'm not sure if we had any result on them. One was to see if uh, our Hall or Yale Harvey would support an additional 500 for a third scholarship. And the other discussion centered around um, connecting with Eric to see if our own BOH budget uh, itself could cover a five, an additional or a third five hundred dollar amount, as we are, you know, currently looking at three three candidates here to award scholarships to, as opposed to two, which is typically covered by Yale Harvey's um, contract with us. Um, Go ahead, Missy. Um, as far as um, hearing back from Mike, I have not. Mike's been kind of. Um, not around. I've emailed him about the dumpster for the hazardous waste day. I haven't heard anything. I um, emailed him about the scholarships. I believe I emailed him about the donation for the household hazardous waste day, and I haven't heard back. So I might just um, email Lauren Harvey um, directly and see if I have a better chance of getting a response back. Um, as far as your budget, you would have to ask for a designated scholarship um, line item and it would have to be voted on by the townspeople that line item that's how that would work um, do you have money absolutely uh, do you have five hundred dollars to move around you'd have to have another line item um, and have it voted on by the townspeople um, and the earliest that could happen is november at a special town meeting. And, and if we did that, um, would we have to declare uh, a specific amount or or could a an amount be quote unquote budgeted? Because we don't always know, I guess, what the quantity of scholarship requests that we get. Um, the only reason we're having this discussion is because, you know, normally we we, we typically advertise two scholarships, um, but just so happens this time we had a third and I think we were kind of in agreement that all candidates are, are worthy. And in the past, you know, we had kind of set a little precedent by being able to kind of support um, an additional award, but I was curious how the specifics of that budget allocation would work. You would have to specifically have a dollar amount because a dollar amount would have to be voted on. And I don't know. I mean, I know the selectmen have a scholarship and that funding source comes from the power power plant. I don't know. 
um, of any scholarships that are offered through the town that are funded by user fees or um, taxes or, or fees of some sort um, normally. And I can be wrong because I don't know every, I just know the selectmen's and I just know of ours. Um, normally those are donations from outside entities like the power plant and like Harvey. I don't know if the senior center has one. You, you know what I'm saying? The elders or um, the Taft library. So I can look more into that if you'd like. I'm wondering with the, uh, the new knowledge that we just received with regard to our new revolving account, if this could uh, play into uh, helping um, to support this in any way. <laughs> unfortunately, those fees, the, the, that revolving account can only, from what I've been told, can only cover the services rendered from the engineering, whether it's a park test or a septic inspections. It can't be used for anything else. That's the point. Right. You're party pooper. I'm trying. <laughs> uh, I, I would say at this point that if um, if our trash hollow had the ability to um, be generous and fund a third one this year, um, that is probably the easiest route to go. And mm -hmm. if they can't, um, I perfectly understand. Um, and we'll have to make a decision. I, I know that one of the applicants is definitely going to be studying environmental science. In the past, that was kind of where the trash haulers were hoping that, you know, they would kind of give um, priority towards someone going into the uh, environmental science field, uh, which is understood. Um, and we just haven't had anybody, um, you know, going into those studies uh, like we do this time. Uh, so we, we not only have three good candidates, we have one that is definitely going to study environmental science. So it is a, a difficult decision. Um, but I would say at this time, if, if they had the ability to fund a third, um, that would be great. If they don't, I, I think we're going to have to make the hard decision. All right, so if you guys are in agreement, then I will email Lauren Harvey um, tomorrow and ask her what if she could pass it on to the powers that be to um, to see if we could get another donation. If, if that's OK with you, too. Yes. Yes, I would agree. If that uh, could work out, that'd be wonderful. It'd be much appreciated. Um, you know, I just kind of stressed that in the email that uh, just the situation and that we're, you know, we have some three really good candidates and just looking to see, you know, not expecting anything, but looking to see if there's a possibility they could help and anything they could do would be greatly appreciated. Okay, I will yeah. do that tomorrow morning. Great, thank you. OK, so the next thing would be more of like um, old business, new business or anything like that. Um, the one thing I'd like to bring up is um, thank you, Tom, this morning for the statements that you made. Um, I thought they were great so this morning. Um, Alan, Tom and I took part in a um, kind of a regional meeting about um, mosquito control. Um, they're going to send us a copy of the PowerPoint presentation and, and a recording and everything. Um, and I thought that it was done very well. It wasn't just um, people who were pro the spraying and it just wasn't people who were anti spraying. I think it was a good mix. So I would ask Tom if uh, you know what he thought and to add any comments. Uh, well, I thought it was uh, well put together. I, I agree with you. I, I think it was a good representation from both sides. Um, I thought it was a good open open discussion. Um, very good viewpoints on on um, the the pro aspect of 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 spraying where where it could be beneficial. Uh, and I uh, also thought there were very good um, pro discussion on you know trying to find other 
options other than looking at a, a pesticide type of a product to help control the mosquito, this mosquito problem. Um, so I, I thought it was a good mix and uh, I, I hope that, you know, something will, will come of it. Um, I, I like the, um, the uh, concept of a, a collaborative uh, approach. Um, so hopefully that can kind of come together well. Um, and I, one thing I didn't mention my, myself and I think is a good idea to include is uh, I, I think if we do a collaborative approach, I'd like to have it include, if, if possible, at the state level along with the local and to uh, I think incorporate um, a couple of specific variables within the community um, and that would be uh, conservation is a key mm -hmm. element along with, um, you know, certain citizenry, like in our case, uh, Ann Mazar, who's great, has done a great job um, with this issue and getting the word out. So individuals like that and individual citizens who can speak to the aspect of, uh, you know, what they do from an agricultural perspective, uh, whether it be beekeeping or, you know, the farming element, um, those that raise horses, things, things of that nature, you know? Yeah, I, I, I agree with you totally, Tom. Um, I think that it's t to have a real good look at it. I think it's more than just a board of health, uh, collaborative. I think you sh we should definitely, um, have CONCOM involved. Um, Anne is involved with the land use and Metacomet, so she brings a lot, I think, to the table as far as that piece of it. Um, we do have, whether they do it for hobby or for business, the beekeepers. Um, we have Southwick Zoo, huge, huge, you know, animal population as far as, you know, for Menden and whatnot. Um, when I did do the call with um, Andy Day, um, I think that's what his name was, um, Andy. Um, one of the things I told him was that Menden would most definitely be um, willing to participate in some kind of collaborative. Um, I explained how we had worked with Upton for the H1N1 as we had a common goal is we had school kids that needed to get the vaccine um, and we worked very well with the town of Upton. Um, so Menden was very is, is very willing to work with other towns. So he was he was glad to hear that. Um, and I also explained to him the other things that uh, other speakers brought up today is it was kind of funny, you know, talking about people just looking on social media and oh, there's a plane and this and that, you know, how so, so many people are intent on watching the, the aerial spray going on. Um, and how people were looking at their yards afterwards and saying that I hadn't seen this, I haven't seen that. Um, and that's all stuff that we tried to bring back to the state, what worked, what didn't work. Um, so I think um, even if we have the collaborative as a larger piece, maybe we should start talking to CONCOM and and, and um, other people to see, if, you know, is there anything that they're concerned as far as mosquito control? Um, and what would they like to see out of a program and kind of get our ball rolling so that maybe when the bigger one gets together, we've already kind of seen what Menden needs. I don't know. How does that sound to you? Yeah, I'm, uh, no, I'm on board with that. Yeah. And did you want ahead, to tell, I was just going to say, uh, I, I am too. And uh, Missy, did you want to tell Alan what we, uh, what we told the folks on the phone? What did we tell the folks on the phone? I don't that remember. Alan would be glad, that Alan would be glad to be our That's official right. representative. That's right. I did. <laughs> I do remember that. Yes. And if he wasn't, we that our our valuable chairman, Mr. Fisk, would be able to too. You see, we're there. We're there, we're, we're there for you guys. <laughs> you know, the, the, it's always good to know you have my back. Um. Well, you know, we're, we're, we're very fortunate where we've already done a, a little bit of this, um, you know, working with Max and working with Ann and some of her friends. 
um, and, and putting out, you know, uh, a couple of notices. And it, it, it's funny when you talk about this, I remember reading uh, one of Ann's connections um, had, you know, responded in a, in a group email that somewhere during the year last year, and this gentleman must like to be out in the woods hiking and everything, it, it got so bad, he just stopped going in the woods. Um, so, you know, it, it, we all have different ways of, of dealing with the uh, mosquitoes and everything they bring along with them. Uh, but, you know, obviously this gentleman, it, it got to the point where the only way to avoid them was to stay out of their habitat, um, whether he liked it or not. So uh, I, I kind of chuckle uh, when I read that. Um, I, I haven't heard too much um, as far as uh, mosquitoes being trapped lately with uh, Tripoli or West Nile, which is good. Um, but we, we know it's coming. Uh, and I agree. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of people, when they hear about mosquito control, uh, they, they automatically think about spraying. Uh, so I think that, um, that notice that, uh, Ann put out and, you know, the few adjustments made to it to, you know, uh, bring the, the horses into it and how it can affect them. Um, we're, we're sort of ahead of the game uh, and already have done some of the work um, that needs to be done. Um, and Tom and Missy, thank you for attending uh, this program today. That oh, was great. Go ahead, was Tom. Great well done. You're very welcome. Yeah, I, I was very pleased with it. I think they brought that, you know, they had Dr. Katie Brown from um, Mass DPH. They had a gentleman from, I think it was out in the Berkshires, their mosquito control program type operator. Um, they had people from Mass Audubon. So it really was, you know, the, and some people who were on conservation commissions in Westboro and one town, I, I don't remember her saying what the town was, but she was out by Amherst. So it was definitely a good mix of people, definitely gave you a little bit of room to think. Um, and like you're, you're right when as soon as people hear a mosquito control program, they automatically think of the trucks with the, the spraying and it's much more than that. And if we can possibly get more of a a la carte type of picture, you know, I, I think the, the, the more of the um, education and the trapping, the surveillance um, and uh, a, as a start. So I thought it was great. Alan. Well, again, uh, both of you, thank you very much. And I would say that, um, you know, well, let's, uh, again, continue to move forward on this issue. Um, uh, I know that, uh, you know, Ann is away right now, but she's available by email. Um, so, you know, let, let's continue to move forward. And um, I will do uh, whatever I can to uh, be part of it. Thank you. So, Alan, that's, uh, from what I can remember and everything, that's all I have for you guys. Um, if you guys have anything for me, um, go for it. <laughs> um, I have a few things. How about you, Tom? I may have a couple. You want to go first? Um, okay, let's see. Um, Something that had come up in discussion, it actually does go back to the coronavirus topic, but um, with regard, and I don't know if you know this, Missy, um, with regard to the Southwick Zoo, mm -hmm. um, I had heard that uh, based on a guideline um, with regard to them opening up to the public, that uh, people were not able to bring in uh, any of their own food to the site? That I don't know. I don't. Um, I, and I think that, you know, I know in times past people could bring food in because of what they do there. People could go and do a little picnic and whatnot. I just did, didn't know if A, you were aware of it and if there was a reason, what was the, what would be the basis for the reason? 
I I am not aware of it, and um, I think there's a part of the guidance that came down for restaurants that the the food had to be prepared on site. But I think that would been it would have been more for um, catering type of situations or. You know, um, I'm not really a food establishment, so I'll hire the pizza place in, you know, wherever. I haven't heard anything that it's not, you're not allowed to bring in your, like, your cooler or anything like that. I could look into it if you'd like, but I don't, off the top of my head, I don't, I haven't heard anything. Yeah, if you're able, if maybe you could shoot out a, uh, an email, it would probably be to what, to, to Mike, would it be Mike Flanagan? That would get it. Uh, it might be Mike Coughlin with DPH, but okay. uh, actually it might be both of them because Mike Flanagan is um, the Division of Labor and Sta Labor and St Labor Standards. If I remember that right, um, so he might get might have an answer just because of it's a workplace. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I'm just curious if it, a if it's accurate, and if it is accurate, I'd just be curious what the what the what the basis is for for that um, restriction on them? I guess I get, you know, the restaurant aspect, uh, a traditional restaurant, but this would be a a zoo where normally you know you have picnic tables, people could come in, it's just their family. Um, I would just you know like to get an idea of uh, you know what that's all about. Sure. Yep, I yeah. can look for that. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? Um, well, the only other thing we haven't touched on, I don't even know if we want to tonight without Andy, would be uh, minutes. We had past minutes that uh, we have to approve, but we can wait till the next go around if you want. Yeah, because I just have to double check if there's one that, I don't know if it was Andy wasn't present or Alan wasn't present. And I don't remember off the top of my head which one that was. So we can, because uh, yeah, I'm sending you more tomorrow for the month of June and then the month of July. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's fine, yeah. Okay. No rush, yep. And I think uh, I had one other thing, but Alan, I'll let you go. I'm trying to remember what it was. All right, um, I wanted to know uh, how the pink bag program was going. Um, not necessarily whether or not we've made a decision on letting them revise their contract. I'm just more interested in uh, people getting service. Um, I have seen the truck around. I have seen people with pink bags out. Um, so, Missy, I'm, I'm curious as to if uh, that is running smoother than it was when it restarted. I, I, I think it might be. Um, and again, I can only go by, um, I, I don't, I've never really gotten complaints or questions on the pink bag program. I've just really based it on, like, um, I know uh, if one of you guys or Andy or a neighbor of yours or Andy's have um, had an issue or if I've had an issue, I can say that um, last week I put out my bags on Tuesday night and they were gone on Wednesday, which is my normal day. And they also had left bags for me um, tied to my mailbox, which um, I know that there was an issue with pickup and leaving behind bags. Um, I do know I did see some um, chatter on the social media within the townspeople and townspeople, you know, letting people know that this is how you could um, get bags and whatnot. So right now I'd say it's don't it, it, it's starting to go back getting back on track um because i haven't had a large outpouring pouring of complaints okay good and and i'm i'm seeing similar so i just kind of wanted to confirm that uh the other question is how are we doing on tonnage i if i remember correctly last time we talked about tonnage we were up and we we felt as though we understood probably why we were up mm -hmm. um over last year i'm just wondering if um what what the trend is at present 
Um, so the only difference I can tell you is um, we when we got the bill for the month of June, it was up. Um, we had I had to ask for additional money of um, forty five hundred dollars, um, which Kim was able to get approved by the selectmen and I had put in for um, for the CARES Act if it was even allowed five thousand dollars to get us through the um, end of fiscal 2020 because we would have taken at least into effect all the way up until the middle of May what the um, tonnage was and you know I don't know what FY 21 will bring us but um, it was there was definitely some more usage um, and we were able to you know Kim got the money but I don't know if we can you know when the CARES Act money I don't know if they'll replace the town coffers with it or not but it was up a little bit um, which we had suspected why it was up a little bit. Alan. Okay. Um, any uh, updates on Galifids with their live entertainment? I was wondering how uh, Betsy was uh, dealing with that. If we got any feedback at all from her. Um, I haven't, but um, that the last meeting that we had had in June when that topic was discussed um, June 24th, um, I believe July 6th had started uh, phase three uh, of the reopening uh, for part one um, where live entertainment was allowed. So now it would be allowed. Um, it's not allowed indoors, so they would be OK as long as they had it outdoors where they had it under the tent and whatnot. And uh, one of the things they did bring up at the one of the last EPH phone calls was a reminder that with drive in movie theaters, either existing or that seems to be the new way some um, businesses have revamped their business, um, you still have to stay in your car. You still can't be outside of your car um, on a blanket or in a chair or anything for a drive-in movie. Uh, you still have to stay in your car. And that was something that was specifically brought up by uh, Michael Flanagan. All right, very good. Yeah, so Gallifords may have kind of taken care of itself. Yeah. Um, just because of the, the timing uh, of things, which is good. Mm -hmm. um, Lenny and Tom, how are they doing? Are they able to keep up? Are they feeling good? Is Tom recovering? What's um, the update on those guys? As far as I, uh, Tom, I haven't talked to since um, the beginning of last week. Uh, so I haven't heard anything um, from him as far as how he's doing. The last time I talked to him, he was doing OK. Um, I know he was just waiting for a note from his doctor to, so he could go back to his regular full time job. Um, as far as Lenny, um, Lenny seems to be doing a lot better. He, um, I don't know, just having the time away on top of everything else, um, but he seems to be doing a lot better, um, trying to pace things better. And I, I've told him if there's a point in time that you just you're overwhelmed or whatever, just let us know. We will figure it out. Um, so, but I'd say as of right now, we're doing good. All right, good. And the last uh, question is. Um, Hazardous Waste Day, I believe you said August 1st is our date. Yep. OK, I'm not sure. I know you sent out the uh, you wanted somebody's contact information for uh, the Hazardous Waste Company. Yep. Um, I didn't respond. I, I didn't respond only. Oh, Sorry. did he? OK, good. So That's I fine. have a, a person and a phone number. I just needed one person, so if they needed to to get in touch with somebody, um, I had a, a, a name and a number, and um, I will actually be contacting um, um, dispatch tomorrow morning to ask for an officer. And um, again, I when I email Lauren about the scholarship money, I will be emailing her about the dumpster. It needs to be delivered next week, so. Um, We'll see where that where that goes. OK, I'm not sure whether I'll be able to attend this year. 
Um, I, I'm really hoping I can, but uh, as of right now, I can't uh, say for certain. Um, Tom, are you available uh, that day? Yes, I'll be available that day. All right, good. Thank you. That was that's it for me. That's my little uh, punch list. Um, uh, and I, I have to say today, Missy, when I was in the office, you uh, you're looking good. I'm hoping your hours are uh, getting a little more back to normal and your routine is getting back to normal. Thank you so much for uh, all you did to get us through uh, those hard times. And um, if there's any way that uh, we can take care of you. Um, <laughs> Please, please let the board know. Well, the good news is I I, I am back in the office, um, which is great. Um, trying to give my family and myself some normalcy. Uh, as you guys may or may not know, my daughter is working for the Snack Shack this summer again down for the town beach and here in Menden. So we're trying to get ourselves back into whatever our new norm is going to be. Um, so that's great. I, I, I'd much rather be in the office and working from home, as as I think I've told all of you guys. Um, as far as an update, the building is still the town buildings are still close to the public. Um, they are easing the restrictions as far as um, board members or other um, committee members that don't necessarily have a full time or part time dedicated employee to start coming back into the buildings. Um, the other day I met with Kim and um, Danny Gardner and another gentleman for furniture. They're actually going to um, be um, building us a small office in this building that we're in right now. Uh, they're going to reconfigure it, kind of give us a little bit more independent space. Um, Time, there are times that I have to have conversations with Lenny that really shouldn't be. It, it's a health issue, so there's really not. It's not a public. It's not needed for public ears, so to speak. So that will be interesting um, and how that works. Um, as far as I know of, we will continue to do the um, remote uh, meetings. Uh, once that changes, um, we will probably be going to the selectmen's meeting room next door um, just because this one won't really be designed um, for a meeting room. I'm sure we could meet, the, you know, the three of us with Ann uh, and, and myself, maybe with uh, Tom if he had to come in because um, we don't have a lot of traffic. But if there was ever a time that we had a lot of people, we would definitely have to meet next door. So, uh, you know, I'll keep you guys posted on how that's going. Um, the other thing, too, I sent you an email, I forwarded an email to you guys tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. Um, I will be t partaking in my first uh, Zoom meeting with the school. Um, I believe Trish will be available from Upton for our first uh, kind of meeting with the reopening of the schools, what the plans will be like. Um, Dr. Maruschek sent some information. They, they wanted numbers from me and Trish. Uh, which we gave them as far as how many positives, how many total tested, things like that. So um, I also explained that um, I am more than willing to attend these meetings, but I what whatever is asked, I will be bringing back to the board or I will be bringing to Lenny or to Ann. Um, I am not there to make decisions. I am there as kind of like a conduit between the school and the board or Lenny or Ann. Um, so, but if any of you guys, I will keep sending you guys the notices of when the, these meetings will happen. Um, I will let you know, and I think to me, the more the merrier. So, um, I don't know how you guys feel about that. Alan, Tom. <laughs> um, I, I think it's great, and I'm, I'm really uh, anxious to hear what they think they can do. Um, to try to get our school population um, back in, in line or as close to what we had as possible. Um, so um, I'm anxious, and uh, if I have the opportunity to uh, attend one of the calls, I, uh, I definitely will, um, because I'm, 
I, I'm, I'm worried about our school population. Um, they really didn't have much of a year. And uh, I would hate to see that generation um, get behind um, and, and miss out on, uh, you know, uh, some very important things in the, in those younger years. So um, that, that that's definitely of interest to me. Uh, and uh, I want to see um, them, you know, succeed in whatever it is they feel they can do comfortably. Uh, so, Missy, thank you for um, dialing in tomorrow and uh, being that conduit um, so that we can uh, assist them in any way possible. Tom? Well, when I saw the start time, I thought to myself, geez, who picked 8 o'clock? I mean, I'm in the private sector. We don't start thinking until at least 9.15, you know? Um, I will take a shot at trying to attend that meeting as well. Um, but I, I won't, I won't, I'm not going to make any promises. <laughs> um, but I do appreciate you, Missy, you know, jumping in and grabbing hold of it. And that's the way to approach it, if anything, just a, as an avenue of a conduit of information to kind of pass along and uh, put it open for discussion because there are a lot of different viewpoints within our group that I think um, – you know, would be beneficial and not all of us can, can make those particular types of meetings. So, um, mm-hmm. much appreciated. Um, yeah, so I, you know, hopefully that, uh, I, I am anxious to hear, um, I know it's just getting going and I, from what I understand there's multiple, um, groups that are involved with this process. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what, um, what can come out of it. Um, in terms of options to successfully, basically successfully get the kids, uh, and I don't say get them on track, because I, I don't know, I don't know necessarily, um, not having conversed with the schools directly on it, how this past season went for them, how it wound up. Um, but hopefully going into a brand new year to, to keep them on track um, with combinations of um, learning options that uh, might be a little different than the normal. Um, but I'd hate to, I, just like Alan, I hate to see him, um, you know, fall behind or, or get sacrificed uh, in the learning process. But again, it is the health of the folks involved that we you know, have to think about. And I understand the concerns. Yep. yep. Um. I do know that they're looking at that there are the, the three options. Uh, totally going back in like nothing's ever happened with some some um, uh, recommendations, you know, the Basque and the distancing and things like that. So it's not really like like nothing ever happened. That was a poor choice of words, but going back in house, uh, then there's continuing the uh, studying from home and then there's a hybrid. I have a feeling that they're going to try and work a hybrid, which would be, I think, beneficial to everybody if it can be done the right way. I know there's concerns about busing and especially the younger kids who will have to wear masks. Um, I know there's concerns with children and, or even the high schoolers as far as um, uh, the socialization part, those who are on IEPs. So there's just so much that's going to have to go into this to try. And, and I, I don't know if they can accommodate. They're definitely not going to be able to make everybody happy. Um, I, but I think as long as they the decisions are made at the best you can, just like I always tell you guys, you're here for public health and you're here to do the, the job that you're, you've been elected to the best way you can. Um, again, you're not going to make everybody happy, but it will it will definitely be interesting to see how this turns out for sure. Alan. Uh, yes, I, I know um, from some firsthand experience, um, there are some people, uh, some students that I've heard have a difficult time learning remotely uh, and they and they realize it and they realize that, you know, they need to be in the classroom. Uh, on the other hand, um, my sister-in-law is a school teacher in Milford, I believe, seventh grade science, and uh, she had a hard time getting kids to log in, um, and probably for a multitude of reasons. Um, some didn't have the equipment, 
to log in. Uh, some maybe didn't have uh, the supervision to make sure that they logged in. Um, so there were times that she was, you know, running classes that she was supposed to be running and you'd have three students uh, jump in. So um, that's, uh, you know, th there's, there's a lot of difficulties in getting everybody uh, on the same page, no matter which program uh, uh, you decide to do. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, it, it, it's a definite concern uh, and uh, they got their hands full. Uh, next meeting. So if you guys are to stay, I mean, typically you meet on the, the second and third, uh, fourth uh, Wednesday of the month. So that would leave you at the 12th and the 26th of August. Uh, if you want to do the every other week, you would meet again August 5th. Um, so it's up to you guys, whatever you guys want to do. Tom, uh, I'm Any open. Preferences? Uh, no, no preferences. Um, if we can maintain the, the, you know, the two week spread, uh, but I'm open. Yeah, I, I could go the fifth or the twelfth. Um, doesn't so matter how, to me. How about we go with August fifth, just so that if I do get in touch with Jamie, we can start working on plans sooner than later. I'm in. Yep, makes sense. All righty. And, and before we adjourn, I did recall my uh, my follow up questions that I forgot. Please move forward, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> the Dickens, you say. Um, well, one had to do uh, with uh, a residence that was going to be utilizing a um, I guess what was an unlicensed, at the time anyway, an unlicensed uh, vendor for dumpster. Missy, it was 93 Providence Road. Yep. Uh, Dave Claro, did that work out okay? Yes. Yep, that's all set. Yep. Great, excellent. Um, and the other, one of the other ones was Gallifit. Thank you, Alan, um, for bringing that up. Uh, it's good to know that sounds like with phase three in place, that's going to um, hopefully that now be able to do things that they couldn't do before. And the last thing I had was, uh, do we know what the current situation is with 65 Hoffet Ave West? That one, they they um, are getting ready to um, um, schedule the park testing. Um, I do know I've spoken to the property owner uh, multiple times um he I, I told him what was expected um he's not sure how he'll be able to do it all um i told you know the 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 only other option he has um if he can't or doesn't want to repair the septic system is to um condemn uh to board up the house um he's talking about selling the house um, things like that. Um, how much time will the board give him? And it, it, it is a failing system. It is a health issue. It, it, it has to be done. The, one of the questions he did ask was um, if he decides to sell the house, how long will the board give him to to sell it? Um, and if there's nobody living in the house, you it, it, it can take it and it's boarded up and take as long as it, it needs to. Um, but as long as there are people living in the house, the house—I mean, it, it's a—it's a—it's an issue. It has to be done. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I, I'm a, I do. Uh, Oops, sorry. No, no, go ahead, Tom. I was going to say agreed, uh, and just in in talking with um, you know the key uh, one of the key residents there. Um, the last we spoke, it didn't sound like at the time they were in a position to necessarily be able to vacate. So I, I don't know that they'll be able to unless you've heard something different with regard to those folks that they'd be able to find an alternative living situation. 
Yeah, the, the property, I mean, the, the renter has uh, not reached out since um, since um, everything first started happening when I was out. Um, I do know the property owner feels that now that the, the piping is unclogged that he, why do I need to fix this? And I said, because your system is in failure. That's why it has to be fixed. And, and it's in failure where it's a, it's a public health issue. Um, so I don't know what direction um, this will go in, um, but I told, you know, the perk test is being scheduled. Uh, he's hired the engineer, the $300 has been paid, um, but where it will go from there, I don't know. Did he acknowledge receipt of the uh, letter that was posted yes. on his door? Yes. Okay. He, yep. Yep. So and, he's. Uh, go ahead. He is aware and he knows that, um, you know, he again, he feels because it's now unclogged um, that it should be all set. And I'm like, no, it's it's still a failure. So he did come back and did pull the park application and whatnot. Um, I did talk to Lenny because unfortunately, um, the gentleman owes back taxes on the property. Uh, typically, I would not be allowed to have to allow to have the park testing done because of that, because we have a bylaw in town. But um, speaking with Lenny, we both agreed because this is a public health issue. Um, so therefore, the testing is going to be done, um, whether the gentleman owes back taxes or not. So this is one of those times where um, because of, you know, health issues, we will supersede the town bylaw and um, if someone doesn't have you know doesn't think that's right by all means say they can come and say something but it's a public health issue so there's no um there's no getting around that it has to be done what is this bylaw that you're referencing i'm not familiar with that the, there's a bylaw in town that sa states that um anyone that has um real estate taxes that are overdue a year or more and my understanding now is the um law has changed statewide that it can be um a day late um that you you can't get a a, a permit whether it's a um building permit or a, a food permit from us or a, a septic permit for you know septic plans or whatever um but yeah, there is a bylaw on the books for that. Um, and normally I do abide by it depending on what's going on. Um, but with this one, because there is a public health issue, there are tenants involved. It, it has to be done regardless. Oh yeah, I would definitely think the public health issue supersedes um, the this bylaw. And I would, I would think anybody who looking at the situation would reasonably conclude the same thing. We're, we're looking to get a permit to, for the betterment to improve the environment it's not to necessarily his advantage uh, mm -hmm. it's really to make things a more healthier situation um, and one last question on that property do we know if building had gotten involved with that property at all i have not heard anything that building got involved but i don't also know if um the person has called back or not i can ask gail tomorrow if you'd like yeah, I'm just curious. I know I'm just uh, I know that they were queried in, in the process and uh, I was just wondering if uh, they ever got involved from their side. Sure. I'll ask yeah. them and then I'll send you a quick text. Yeah, OK, appreciate it. No I'm problem. good on my end. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I guess I'm uh, I'll chime in that I'm encouraged that things are uh, happening, positive things. Um, it's just that, you know, nobody really knows how far this gentleman is uh, going to be able to go with it. Um, but, uh, you know, if he came in, he pulled the permit, he paid the money, he hired an engineer. Um, that's uh, definitely encouraging. Uh, anything else, folks? Nothing. I'm good for my end. <laughs> All right. Can I have a motion? I motion to adjourn the meeting. All those in favor, aye. Aye.
Thank you very much. Much appreciated. And uh, next meeting, August 5th. Talk to you all then. <laughs> Good night. Thank you all. Thank Good you. Night. Good night.